I always recall first the porpoises of the inside passage. They raced beside us. They crisscrossed with each other at our bow. And then they disappeared as quickly and mysteriously as they had come to us. Albert Schweitzer asked of knowledge what it could tell him of such life. Oh God. Knowledge replied, what I can tell you is little, yet immense. And just like those porpoises, knowledge could not explain further whence this universe came whether it is bound, or how it happens to be at all. So knowledge concluded simply that the will to live is everywhere present, even as in you. Henry Beston was an American naturalist who saw the animal world from a different perspective. He wrote that we patronize animals for their incompleteness, their tragic fate of having taken form so far below ourselves. He saw animals not as brethren or underlings, but other nations caught in a net of life and time with us, as fellow prisoners of the splendor and travail of the earth. My name is Susan Stevenson, and I have wandered far afield of my story, which began many years ago on the island of Kodiak, Alaska, at the edge of Old Woman's Bay, where I stood stomping my feet to keep warm. Fascinated by the gulls and ravens that were swarming above me, quarreling over a massive pot of writhing king crab hoisted from the bay and deposited on shore next to an old gray wooden cook shack. Snow had bound the earth white in the night like our seam clouds of breath and rising mists from the boiling cooking pots. Those birds and that cracking sound of cooked crab, those smells in that brittle air, all of them began that day to call my name that I should return to Alaska. I could never silence that voice in my head. So I did return, but to Juneau, Alaska's capital city, and where eventually I would sail the inside passage 
aboard the motor vessel Princeton Hall. I can't count the journeys or visits to harbors that for generations have sheltered fishing fleets, internationally registered yachts, and floating homes of liveaboards. Or the times we dropped anchor in remote, breathtaking stillness. Juno perches on the mainland, but like the rest of remote southeast Alaska, Juno is accessible only by air. Or travel by sea. Some call this region Alaska's Panhandle. It's a narrow corridor that stretches roughly 500 miles south of Alaska's vast interior, running along the western edge of the continental shelf. to the east. And the Gulf of Alaska lies west beyond a thickly forested archipelago composed of more than a thousand islands. Between these two land masses is the fabled, sheltered, inside passage. The tourism industry deems this region one of the most desirable destinations on our planet. God was showing off when he made Southeast Alaska, said one observer, who had explored its rainforests, the sheltered bays and inlets, winding channels and deep silent fjords, glaciers and ice flows, This region is famous too for its concentrations of bald eagles and bears. Humpback whales. And Alaskan wild salmon. In fact, perhaps that's where I should begin, with tips for visitors to the Inside Passage. For example, don't ask the locals where the penguins are. No penguins in Alaska. Where are the polar bears? Polar bears are marine mammals whose images are abundantly provided along Franklin Street, although they live in the Arctic Circle. 
about a thousand miles due north of the Inside Passage. And just don't ask, where are the igloos? It might seem logical to ask about elevation as you step ashore, but a casual glance around you will reveal that you are standing at sea level. The rainforests reach the edge of the sea, from which comes the confusion. Alaska's mystique has never left me. Now, in my quiet years, I feel responsible to share what might seem chance to some. But for me were significant doors that I chose and thresholds I wanted to cross and from which I learned far beyond the images captured by my camera lenses. Mine are American stories though, human stories, not just Alaskan stories. In the old days, old stories and the elders who told them were valued because they contained the wisdom of experience. In the old days, too, it was not polite to ask where you came from or what you were doing in Alaska. I hope you will subscribe to my new channel because I'll know that you know the value of old stories too of amazing people, places, and animals. And I won't think you're impolite if you ask questions, because I'll gladly share what I know about Alaska. But for now, this introduction is enough because I have to catch a rising tide. So until next time, be safe. And may good luck be your captain and sunshine be your mate. May laughter be your pilot and happiness be your freight. May all the ports you enter bring pleasure ever new Good health be your steward, and good friends be your crew.